Death, is the most atrocious of all evils. It is the last goal we cross, in a life full of obstacles. Death, is a natural event, but also a hard reality to accept. The unknown frightens us of death, the loss of our family members, of what we have built, of our memories, of the fear that everything will end, after having exhaled our last breath. Even not knowing what's next, amplifies these fears. Western iconography has always depicted it as a sinister reaper. A skeleton wearing a black robe, holding a scythe, and accompanying the souls of human beings into the realm of the dead. The conception of death, and of the way to deal with it, changes from one culture to another, as well as the belief of another life after death, and the destiny of the soul. Among all these different interpretations of death, there is only one certainty, the transformation that the body undergoes, inside the coffin. All this was possible thanks to thanatology. Science that studies the corpse and the related changes in the body, following the death event. Let's see in detail what happens to our body when we die. Let's start with the definition of death in the medical field. Death, is the permanent cessation of all vital functions of the living being. Immediately, after death, our body undergoes modifications, known as cadaveric phenomena. They are divided into two main groups, abiotic phenomena and transformative phenomena. Let's go see them in order. Abiotic phenomena are negative signs, as their absence indicates the cessation of life. The immediate abiotic phenomena represent the first outward signs of death, even if they have no certainty value for the diagnosis of death, and consist of stopping the circulation, stopping breathing, loss of consciousness and all neurological functions. The consecutive abiotic phenomena, on the other hand, are cooling or algorithm mortis, dehydration, hypostasis, lavor mortis, cadaveric rigidity or rigor mortis, tissue acidification. Let's see in detail. Algorithm mortis. Immediately after death, begins a process of cooling, at first gradual, and then more evident, until the body reaches equilibrium, with the external temperature. The normal body temperature of a human being is around 37 degrees centigrade. At death, however, the body gradually begins to cool down, because all those internal processes, that previously dealt with the production of heat and temperature regulation, stop working. In the first three to four hours, the body temperature drops by half a degree every hour. Over the next five or ten hours, it drops one degree every hour. In the following twelve hours, on the other hand, the heat is progressively reduced, until it reaches the ambient temperature. The factors that can speed up, or slow down heat loss are Age The body constitution The thickness of the subcutaneous fat And the cause of death The rigor mortis process is also influenced by Temperature From humidity The ventilation of the environment From the season and from the clothes of the corpse. Lavor mortis. It is also called cadaveric hypostasis, and generally begins to appear one or two hours after death, and increases in extent and intensity with the passage of time. Lavor mortis is the discoloration of the body after death, caused by the stasis of the blood. This happens, because the heart no longer pumps blood, which slowly filters downwards by gravity. When the blood reaches the skin, so-called hypostatic spots are formed. 
spots of variable color, from pink to red, to purplish brown, up to black. Rigor mortis. Soon after death, the muscles are flabby, but after a period of about two to three hours, they begin to contract and stiffen. It is rigor mortis, also called post-death muscle atrophy, and consists in the stiffening of voluntary and involuntary muscles, which increases in intensity with the passage of time. The body remains rigid until rigor mortis ends or is physically broken. However, R at first it is more evident in the smaller muscles, such as those of the jaw and the mimic muscles of the face. It then passes into the upper limbs and trunk, and subsequently into the lower limbs. This process is due to the formation of resistant chemical bridges between muscle proteins, actin and myosin, and to the degradation of ATP, the molecule that provides the energy for muscle contraction. The heart takes on a systolic appearance, and the diameter of the cavities is reduced. The scrotum undergoes a wrinkling. The pupil passes from mydriasis to meiosis, i.e. the pupil diameter narrows. The stomach retracts, highlighting the mucus folds, which appear raised. Rigor mortis reaches its maximum intensity after about 24 or 36 hours from death. And from the 48th hour, it slowly returns to a state of total flaccidity, and then usually completes within the 72nd hour, as decomposition then begins. Transformed phenomena are positive signs, as they actively act in modifying the human organism. Destructive transformative phenomena are autolysis, self-digestion, putrefaction,